Well, this morning we are going on a little bit of an adventure. My cousin Josh and I are almost exactly the same age and we grew up really, really close. Like, I used to go visit and stay there with uh, my aunt and uncle for summers and visit. He lived right next door to my grandmother. So, I mean, just like our whole childhood, we grew up very much like brother and sister. Um, he has spent the last nine years living in New York City. Just moved back to Arkansas a few months ago with his sweet wife and I'm so enjoying having them close. Now I am venturing into the world of Asian cuisine because I wanna grow 85% of my food this year and if you're really trying to cook uh, with fresh ingredients and largely plant-based, uh, Asian cooking's where it's at. Now Josh, in his time in New York City, had incredible Asian cooking at his disposal. And so he's teaching me, which we are starting this morning with my first trip to his favorite Asian market here in Little Rock, Arkansas. All right, so this is my cousin Josh. Hi. And he is telling me kind of his journey into learning Asian cooking. And so he's showing me this cookbook. So will you tell them kind of what you did, what you just showed me, how you were cooking through this cookbook? I think that's such a cool way to learn to cook. Yeah, there's this restaurant that I really love in New York City uh, called Pok Pok. And um, it's by this guy, Andy Ricker, who's made kind of a life of traveling to Thailand. And uh, he published this cookbook by the same restaurant name. And I told myself, when I got back from Thailand a year ago that I would try to cook through it. You know, I haven't finished it yet, but every Let's... check mark is a different uh, recipe that I've made. And it's been a lot of fun. It's been a really nice introduction to uh, Thai cuisine. So I've actually, uh, I just threw a copy of this into my Amazon wish list, and I'm going to do the same thing and just like cook through this. I think that's great. <laughs> I actually learned to cook, but I don't know if I've ever told you this. I learned to cook by cooking through a cookbook. Um, one called Mad Hungry, Feeding Men and Boys. I got wow. probably 10 or 11 years ago. And I got it, it's by Lucinda Scala Quinn, and that's in my uh, Amazon store. I'll put that link down below too. It's under the Goodreads tab. And she now has a few cookbooks, but I bought that and started cooking through it. That's how I learned to cook. So, yeah. like, period. Right. <laughs> so. It's just kind of like taking a course. You just want to, like, kind of take each chapter as it comes, and you can teach yourself to learn anything. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, a flat bottom wok sits really, really well on your stovetop, typically. Um, and it's just kind of like Asian cast iron. The good ones are not made out of aluminum. They're made out of carbon steel. And you season it just like you would anything else. That's cool. Yours looks well loved. Yeah, yeah it definitely is. <laughs> but That's like, cool. You don't have to make it. We'll make we'll make something with this a little bit later today. Actually. That's really yeah. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and you can get all this stuff in Little Rock. You, this isn't like exotic stuff you have to order from uh, Thailand or any other like major city. Like, yeah. The stores we're going today actually have clay mortar vessels in them. So. That's cool. Yeah. So this is made of clay. I didn't feel it. It's made of clay, okay, and cool. then you have kind of like a wooden wooden uh, handle for for mashing things. Um, yeah, your granite. Water pestle is more for like pounding and pulverizing. Yeah, so, so this then, is what you make like chili paste and stuff in. Exactly, but then this would be used more for just sort of like lightly bruising and kind I of see. mixing and doing that kind of work. Another device you don't have to have, but you can if you want to make sticky rice, is a sticky rice cooker, which is basically sticky rice is steamed. Did, have you enjoyed this? I have. I haven't had um, time to dive into it yet, but what I'm really excited about with it is that they have ways for me to make vegetarian and vegan versions of the different recipes. Yeah. Um, often, uh, something I struggle with is I have vegetarian friends. Yeah. But Thai cooking calls for fish sauce. Yeah. They, they, every recipe has fish sauce in it. And a lot of broths and stuff too, I'm sure. Lots of broths, you can't get away from it. Um, you know, broths are easy, you can just go with vegetable broth. Mm -hmm. But how do you do like fish sauce and like yeah. you, how do you get the same flavor out of it and they actually have a recipe for a, a vegan fish sauce about oh that's there. cool so. i actually gave josh a copy of baker creek's vegan cookbook for uh, his birthday a couple of weeks ago uh, i really enjoyed this and uh they have a lot of like asian thai recipes paste i recently made in the mortar and pestle that is uh, really really good i made these it's not, it's not spicy it looks like it's spicy and uh, i want you to try this because it's really good I just dip out. It's sweet. This is sweet? Mm -hmm. It's a jam. It's called a chili jam. It looks amazing. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. So what kind of chilies are in that? It's that, um, I'm going to mispronounce this. It's um, guajillo, hmm. I think. They're uh, these, you can get them basically at any uh, Mexican market. And we have a market like this we can go visit today as well. That is so it's right good. right next to the Korean. That has fish sauce in it. It does. Yeah, I can taste it. Like kind of on the aftertaste, just barely. That's really good. And I'm assuming this is probably pretty simple to make in a mortar and pestle. There's nothing. Yeah. Like five ingredients. Yeah. Dried chilies, peppercorns, some ginger, some garlic shallot, dried shrimp, which is a strange ingredient. Mm -hmm. Something you have to kind of add to your kitchen to do this kind of cooking. I noticed um, that that was in a lot of the kimchi recipes that I was looking at. Was dried. the shrimp paste? Yeah. Oh yeah, and shrimp paste is also something we can pick up. Today. Yeah. And then yeah, a lot of sugar, a lot of fish sauce. That's cool. So <laughs> what's that cookbook? Is Bangkok. That's cool. Yeah, I just got this one for my birthday. Cool. <laughs> We're gonna go into this market. I'm gonna take my GoPro because I don't know exactly what the footage is gonna be like. I think it's gonna be pretty busy, so um, we'll do that. now the Asian markets were incredible we actually went to two so that footage was two different places it was a little bit overwhelming I didn't um, I didn't film a ton because there may be just a tiny bit of a language barrier with some of the people and I know that it uh, freaks some people out for me to be filming so sometimes I try to be kind of mindful of that when I go in places however found some amazing stuff um, in the first market that we went Nothing's labeled. I mean, you just, it's not labeled what it is. And I got this really neat green and I actually recognized it as something that I got seeds to grow this year. Um, and I'm pretty sure this is like a multicolor spinach. So I'm really excited about that. And the thing with a lot of Asian cooking is, is you do a lot of stir fries and stuff. And like what Josh was saying, it doesn't really matter what it is. It's gonna be pretty good stir fried. And I'm excited to add some new flavors to using greens because kind of my go-to is to you know melt some butter or some coconut oil saute onion and garlic and then wilt greens in that i will do that breakfast lunch and dinner throw some fried eggs on top and so now by adding in fish sauce and dried shrimp and chili paste i'm doing the same you know cooking technique essentially but with a different set of flavors using the same thing because honestly learning to use a lot of greens is just really imperative if you're going to be using your garden to provide a large amount of your food for your family. Let's give it a try. See if I can get 
Josh the seal of approval. It smells amazing. So you eat this with rice because it's just so flavorful that it would be kind of overpowering without it. That's delicious. That's pretty good. Very, very good. All right, well, I'm leaving. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming for over. Thanks for hanging teaching out. Teaching me and my YouTube <laughs> friends about Asian cooking. He said, I don't know if I should be the one to make this video. I'm not a professional. I was like, that's okay. People like to watch me garden. I'm so not a professional. I was like, when normal people do things, it teaches other normal people that they can. Yeah, it's a lot <laughs> so, of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. I had so much fun with my cousin. I love that I got to take you guys along with me. I didn't know that we had that kind of resource here locally. Now that I know, I will be going to those markets. The two places that we went today, if you are local, was called San oriental store I believe and uh, Mr. Chang's they're both in Little Rock and there were some other resources he said but those two had everything that we needed I am going to go ahead and put a link in our Amazon storefront a little tab called Asian cooking and I'm going to go ahead and put Josh's recommendations for um, books and some really imperative tools to get started in Asian cooking in that tab. So if this is something you're wanting to join me in, you can definitely go check that out when you buy from our storefront. It uh, helps support our family. We put things in there that are vouched for either by our close friends or us personally. These are the things that we use that we can say, hey, these are valuable tools. And it's a great way to support our channel at no additional cost to you. I'm also putting some of the stuff that he recommended in my own wish list. You guys ask me all the time to continually update that and you bless my socks off by purchasing from that. It's just one of those sweet things that, I don't know, it's so extra. It's one of those extra things in my life that sometimes just tickled me and blow me away how often people send us gifts from our wish list that is so my love language but in all sincerity it really does help our family a lot of times we put things that we need for upcoming projects a lot of times we just put everyday stuff that we use around our house a lot and a lot of times we put stuff in there that we might want for ourselves that we would never actually prioritize and uh, purchase for ourselves so that's a huge blessing that link is always down in the description of our videos and i just want to say thank you tremendously for using both of those links because they're both a big blessing to our family. So I'm wondering, are you interested in Asian cooking or are you already uh, doing cooking like this at home? Do you have any suggestions for great products that you enjoy, great recipes or resources that you enjoy? I think this is really just gonna open up a lot of opportunities to be able to use the food uh, that we grow. And I am feeling really hopeful and, and optimistic about it. So thank you guys. So much for hanging out with us today and going on this little adventure. I look forward to sharing more of this journey of this new thing that I'm learning with you. I bless you guys. Until next time. Okay.